idea. The more I think about this, the more I like it. And I know that some of you DC fans feel this is a little bit of a betrayal for Bale to jump over to the other side. But I think it's okay. I'm going to explain why. I mean, it hasn't happened yet. He's only in talks. But when it gets reported uh, by all the trades, it usually happens. I think the only two times the deal didn't go through was Joaquin Phoenix for Doctor Strange and Harry Styles for Prince Eric. And those were right down to the line, too. Uh, but this will probably work out. And again, I now kind of hope it does. But yesterday, I first heard this news when it had first broke. I was furiously editing my Joaquin Phoenix uh, Oscar video. Uh, I put a question mark because it's a video about whether or not now that he has the Golden Globe, will he get the Oscar? So I hope you'll check that out. So I was deep in that and then I jumped right into my live stream and one of you was like, Hey, Grace, what do you think of Christian Bale being in Thor? And I thought, you know, quite frankly, I didn't believe it. I thought it was just wishful thinking from a Marvel fan, right? Like, oh, wouldn't it be great if Christian Bale was in the, was in the MCU? So I was like, he's not going to do that. And the reason I said he wouldn't is because he's notorious for not liking the business side of Hollywood. He's an artist. And you know what? He kind of is. He is an artist. Plus, he's already done his time in big Hollywood blockbusters. Sometimes it worked out. Sometimes it really didn't work out. But he's free and clear with his Oscar. He's at the stage of his career where he can only do the roles that excite him. So by the way, that means that this must excite him, which excites me and should excite you. But then, when I saw that the news was indeed true, you can see it in the live stream, my reaction was, wow, that Taika Waititi can talk anyone into anything. Well, he couldn't convince anyone to play Hitler. As I first reported to you, as I'd heard from my sources, and as he later admitted, some of you didn't believe me, but he admitted it during his uh, Oscar campaigning, he wanted a, a name. Uh, I think Fox Searchlight, because at the time it was a Fox movie, they felt that it would be better if a name actor was playing Hitler. But nobody would do it. Uh, but Ty so Taika Waititi had to do it himself. But he still talked a lot of big names, uh, most, mostly Scarlett Johansson, although her judgment is a little bit suspect. She was so good in the movie, though. But anyway, uh, he, she did, he did talk her into being in Jojo Rabbit. And he also talked a very nervous Disney into still releasing the movie after they acquired it from Fox. They were like, what's in this Fox grab bag? A Nazi comedy. Uh, but they released it. It got a lot of Golden Globe nominations. And it's, you know, I think that it's... I think it didn't really quite work out to the level that Taika Waititi had hoped, but the movie, I would say, it didn't embarrass itself. It's a draw. It's a little bit like the Star Wars situation. For those of us like myself who have problems with it, I think it wasn't really particularly well received by the public, but I don't think that it was a failure either. Uh, and also, the way Thor Love and Thunder is shaping up, Taika Waititi's just fine. All right, so, uh, and of course, speaking of Thor, let's not forget that he convinced multiple Oscar winner Cate Blanchett to be the big villain in a Marvel movie. I don't know if she's ever coming back. I hope she does. She seems to, I, she's having her own personal crisis, threatening to retire after nobody saw what, uh, where'd you go, Bernadette? Uh, she shouldn't have made that movie. But anyway, uh, he also got Matt Damon to cameo in Thor Ragnarok, which was hilarious. And maybe Damon put in a good word with his Ford versus Ferrari co-star. But even if Damon didn't, I think bottom line, Taika Waititi is undeniably a very interesting director doing some very interesting stuff. He's making a Michael Fassbender uh, soccer movie right now. Uh, and Michael Fassbender can be very funny too. So I, I think that should be interesting. And on that note, Taika Waititi is particularly funny. Very funny. Very, very funny. But also, I think, with strong messages. It's like intellectual funny. And who doesn't love intellectual funny, particularly in Hollywood? Uh, and everybody likes comedy. And I think Christian Bale himself is hilarious in Ford vs. Ferrari, showing a true comedic streak. This is a part of his career I think he has re yet to really explore. And if you want to be funny, I think Taika Waititi is the person to do it with. Just ask Chris Hemsworth. So I imagine that pretty much anyone in Hollywood these days would at least take Taito Waititi's call and probably sign on the dotted line, uh, except to play Hitler, which is understandable. Uh, but some of you DC fans feel that Christian Bale shouldn't take the call, at least not for a Marvel movie, as he is one of DC's iconic Batman and shouldn't play for the other team, so to speak. But that's just it. Christian Bale is one of several Batmen, right? And Warner Brothers is already on their second new Batman after Bale's run with Nolan. Plus, let's be honest here, while Christian Bale is undeniably a phenomenal actor, 
He wasn't the greatest Batman, right? And he wasn't even weaker Bruce Wayne. And Michael Keaton, by the way, the original, well, not the, well, Adam West, of course, uh, rest, in, uh, rest in peace, was the original Batman. But the first movie Batman, Michael Keaton, he went over to Marvel and he was fantastic. Um, well, Marvel adjacent, but still, nobody complained about that. So I think it's fine. Plus, we have no idea yet who Christian Bale might be playing in Thor Love and Thunder. It could be a motion capture performance, which means you'll never actually even see him in the movie. Bradley Cooper, himself now a highly respected actor and director, but Oscar is. Give him time. Uh, he has shown the mileage that you can get out of doing motion capture work for Marvel with a very small commitment. Uh, you know, Bradley Cooper just comes in and does a few days of voice work and that's it, which might be very appealing to Christian Bale, right? Although Christian Bale, again, is an extremely serious actor. So he'd probably want to do the motion capture himself like Josh Brolin, right? He might be excited about the acting challenge pioneered by Andy Serkis, who, by the way, Bale already did some motion capture for, motion capture for as uh, a voice in Mowgli. It was really just the face. But still, this is an exciting new frontier of acting. And I think, you know, Christian Bale might be like, let's get in here. So who could Bale be playing in Thor Love and Thunder? Well, yesterday, the internet gleefully hoped he might play Beta Ray Bill. Uh, and the jokes about Christian Bale, who of course is famous for physically altering his body for roles, having to be told he doesn't actually have to turn into a horse to play Beta Ray Bill, was pretty funny. Those jokes were great. Uh, plus again, Beta Ray Bill would be a highly comedic role, which would be a refreshing change of pace for Bale. Uh, and I'm sure Taika Waititi would love it because he'd probably get to interact with him a lot in his own uh, role in the Thor movies. Uh, and Beta Ray Bill has already been teased in Taika Waititi's Thor Ragnarok. But Thor Love and Thunder is already a pretty busy movie. It's got two Thors, Valkyrie is said to be getting a love interest, and of course, the whole Jane Foster has cancer storyline, which can't be sidelined. That has to be important. Now, on that note, I do want to say that while I didn't agree with his approach on Jojo Rabbit, I think Taika Waititi, while he's clearly going to make a lot of changes to Jason Aaron's story from the comics, for all his comedy, he isn't afraid of serious subjects. And so I don't think he will shy away from the cancer storyline. I think we can trust him with it. Plus, I don't think Natalie Portman would allow him to mess it up because I think the cancer storyline and being able to finally be the hero is a big part of why she's willing to return. And Natalie Portman, herself an Oscar winner, is probably another plus for Bale, as she would be someone he would get to act opposite of. Other possible roles for Bale are Gore, the God Butcher, which would also likely be motion capture, although they could do it with makeup. Uh, Star Wars has proven that, as Gore looks a little bit like he came out of Star Wars. Uh, but that's another great character or villain from Jason Aaron's run. Jason Aaron's Thor comic is so good. And also the new comic that just touched off with Donny Cates writing is also excellent. You should be reading Thor these days. One of the best comics out there. But anyway, this would allow Taika Waititi to show other gods beyond Asgard as Gore hunts them down. He's like a god serial killer. That could be interesting. A little American psycho there. But Jason Aaron's own choice, and quite frankly my choice as well, is from Jane, the Jane Foster Thor actual storyline. And that's Dario Ager. This, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. The Greek CEO, I'm sure some people would be like, why don't you get a Greek actor? But no, I think Christian Bale would be great. But he's the CEO of Roxon, another famous Marvel company like Oscorp or Hammer, you know, versus Stark Industries. Stark Industries is the good company, and these are the bad ones. But they're all kind of cut from the same cloth. And he can also, by the way, turn into a minotaur. Wow, so you'll get a little bit of a cool action sequences there. But what's the most interesting, that's actually not the most interesting thing about Dario. He is a, he is a villain who mines the galaxies for resources for his company, making him an environmental villain of galactic proportions. And during the War of the Nine Realms, he had his sights on the Nine Realms and actually began to uh, mine them for resources. It's fantastic. I think Taika Waititi and Christian Bale would be very interested in not just the comedy, but the message that could be mined from such material and really draw um, a, 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 an allegory or a, meta, you know, a parallel to the environmental abuses that are taking place today. Like once we suck the earth dry, we're obviously gonna have to turn our, our eyes to the stars or our machines to the stars. Uh, and also, with this character, Warner Brothers would get to have Bale himself on screen at least part of the time, when he was non-minatory. So, who would you like to see Christian Bale play in Thor, Love, and Thunder? And what are your thoughts on actors jumping between Marvel and DC? 
I think enough time has passed that it's okay. Especially since, again, the Batman mantle has already been passed on now twice. And also, these are all very different characters. Bale is not playing another uh, Batman-type character for Marvel. He's going to be doing something, I think, which will be quite different. And especially for an actor like Bale, who's so transformative, it will seem very different. Uh, you know, he's not one of those actors who really just does one thing, which we all love. But, you know, that I think that limits them in their ability to jump between franchises. But Bale, again, he's transformative. So, what do you think? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.